<clears throat> Good morning. How's everybody doing? I'm Tom Douthit, aka the Soul Man, coming to you on Sunday morning with your straightforward Bible teaching called the Straight Edge. All right. So um, today is August 25th, and we're going to be continuing our study in the book of Romans. Today we're in chapter 10. So um, right now we're in the middle of God through Paul, talking to the Jewish nation, the nation of Israel, because they have rejected their Messiah. And so that's where we're kind of at. Let's open up with a word of prayer, shall we? Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for your love and your kindness and your mercy, but also for your justice. Father, I thank you that uh, you've saved us through the blood of Jesus. Thank you for that. I ask that you be with all of those who we know that are suffering and struggling, whether it's financial or physical or health-wise, relationships. Lord, we're in a tough time in this world, and I ask that you bless people. Bless people that seek you. And um, we're going to study that today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. So, uh, hey, Mary. Hey, Gary. All right. Now, a couple of Virginia people. One still in Virginia, one's here in Florida. Good to see you on here. And AC, good morning. All is well. We're going to have a fantastic day as we started off in the Word of God. So um, once again, this is Romans chapter 10. If uh, Hey, Roland, if you're wondering about my t-shirt, I'll give you a second. It says, okay, last time, remember that TV commercial when we were little? This is your brain. This is your brain on drugs. This is your brain. Happy and happy, healthy. This is your brain in hell. Any questions? So anyways, that's what the shirt's about, if you were wondering. So good morning, Kathy and Bill and uh, everybody that's getting on here. And again, I encourage you to share this. Share it now so other people can watch it live. Uh, share it on your page. Share it in a group. And then uh, when it's done, of course, if you can, please share the link. And uh, we just appreciate that so much. And believe me, people need the Word of God, and they need it straightforward. They need it straightforward. So um, we're going to give you the straight edge today. This is Romans chapter 10. Brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is, this, is that they may be saved. So Paul, who used to be Saul, a, a hyper-zealous uh, Jew, killing Christians, imprisoning Christians for believing in Jesus as the Messiah, now having met the Messiah personally, he's telling the nation of Israel, I pray to God that you'll all be saved. For I can testify about them that they are zealous for God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge. Well, that sounds like a political party. I've been seeing a lot of stuff about this current uh, past week, all kinds of excitement, and they're so zealous for everything, but it's not based on knowledge. And since they did not know the righteousness that comes from God and sought to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. So anybody that tries to establish their own righteousness, in other words, I'm going to be righteous, I'm going to be uh, uh, okay with God, I'm going to get to go to heaven because I've been a pretty good person. And the big red X on the talk shows. Eh! You don't get to go to heaven because you've been a pretty good person. Unless you were absolutely, perfectly sinless from the cradle to the grave, you do not get to enter the holy presence of Almighty God. However, you've been given an opportunity. It says right here, that since they did not know the righteousness that comes from God and sought to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. However, Christ is the end of the law so that there may be righteousness, <clears throat> be righteousness for everyone who believes. For who? Everyone who believes. You can be saved no matter who you are, only if you believe. So, is this righteousness that comes through Christ, which puts an end to the law and is a new covenant, this righteousness is available for everyone? Yes, it's available to everyone. But does everyone get to uh, uh, 
uh, enjoy the consequences? No. Why, why not? Everyone who believes. If you believe, you get to enjoy the consequences of what Jesus did for you. If you don't believe, you're not going to be saved. It's, it's really that simple. God's uh, favor, God's free gift of salvation and righteous standing in his sight is given to those who believe. Christ's salvation, Christ's atonement, his death on the cross, is sufficient. Make sure you're paying attention to that word. It's sufficient for everyone who's ever been alive. But it's only efficient for those who believe. Good morning, Kim. I know you're on here too. As soon as I saw Gary, I knew that. Good morning, Michael. All right. And Ross, good to see you getting on here. We're in Romans chapter 10. So there is no righteousness based on being a good person or trying real hard or obeying a lot of rules because you can never be perfect. However, Christ is the end of the law so that there may be righteousness. I am considered righteous in God's eyes. Not because I'm Tom Douthat, not because I did anything good or did a lot of things good or enough things good. I'm considered righteous in the sight of Almighty God because of what Jesus did on the cross. Because Jesus shed his innocent blood to pay the debt I owed for my sin. It's as simple as that. Moses, verse 5, Moses describes in this way the righteousness that is by the law. So this is the righteousness that comes from obeying the law, and this is how Moses described it. The man who does these things will live by them. In other words, if you obey every law, you'll live. Have you? I haven't. Then he says, but the righteousness that is by faith, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down or who will descend into the deep? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming. Morning, Chip. Once you've accepted the word of Christ, the word of God through Jesus Christ, it's placed in your heart. And it should be coming out of your mouth. You should be proud and willing and excited and thankful and happy to share the Bible, to share the words of God, to share Jesus Christ and the salvation he offers. Don't be worried about the society that shuns you for, oh, don't talk about politics or religion. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about a relationship with the man who created you, the God who created you, who came down as a man and gave his life for you. Good morning, Dorothy. Good to see you on here. And Paul Kopecki, good to see you guys on here. So Romans chapter 10, um, verse 8, the word is near you, it is in your mouth, it is in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming. Here it is. Man, this is important. Romans 10, 9 and 10. Memorize these verses, these two verses. Romans 10, 9 and 10. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You will be saved. Why? Because you believed in your heart and confessed with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. In other words, is God, is the creator, the three in one, the all in one. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. It's justified, never sinned. And it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Saved. Saved from what? Saved from the wrath of God on all those who have sinned against him. God is so loving and so merciful that he's willing to forgive everything you've ever done. Every time you've ever cursed God 
Every time you've ever hurt someone else, God's willing to forgive you. If only you will believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. I call on the name of the Lord every day. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. What is the name of the Lord? Jesus, the Christ, Yahshua HaMashiach. That's Hebrew for Jesus, the Messiah. Good morning, Chris. Romans chapter 10, verse 13, 14. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will, not might, will be saved. And this is important too, coming up, watch this right here. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? You can't. If you haven't believed in God, if you haven't believed in Jesus Christ and his atoning death, you can't be saved. And you can't call on God and ask to be saved if you don't know who he is. So then he says, and how can they believe in one of whom they've never heard? Well, they can't. That seems like a problem. Good morning, Tricia. It seems like a problem. And then he says, and how can they hear without someone preaching to them? Well, they can't. So therefore, if they're going to be saved, they need to know who Christ is. And if they're going to know who Christ is, they need to be told about him. And if they're going to be told about him, somebody has to be preaching about him, talking about him, telling people about him. Good morning, Barb. Romans 10, 14. Then he says, and how can they preach unless they are sent? Maybe you're not good at preaching. Maybe you're not good at sharing the word of God. Well, you can still testify about Jesus in your own circles, but you can do other things. You can help. You can give money to the church to help support missionaries who go out and preach and teach the word of God. If you don't have money, you could go to the church and you could stack chairs, open chairs, sweep the floors, help serve the homeless. Gosh, there's so many things you can do to help serve. But if you're able to speak clearly, you should be preaching the word of God at every opportunity. Every opportunity. Then he says, look at this. How can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Remember, good news is the word gospel. When we say the gospel according to John, we're actually saying the good news according to John or Matthew or Mark. This is the good news. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the good news of Jesus Christ. So how beautiful is someone who shares God with others. Morning, Michelle. How beautiful is not only the feet, but the arms, the legs, the face, the head. How beautiful is the countenance of someone who is sharing the good news that you too can be saved and be considered righteous and spend eternity in the presence of the creator God. Well, I mean, come on. Good morning, Bobby. So then he says in verse 16, but not all the Israelites accepted the good news. Why? Why? They've been waiting for the Messiah, praying every day, all these formulas and methods and prayers, looking forward to the Messiah's coming. And then he shows up and they deny him. Not all the Israelites accepted the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord... Who has believed our message? Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. Logos, the word, the word of God, the word in Christ. Whew. But I did ask, did they not hear? Did these Israelites not hear that Jesus was the Christ? Of course they did. 
Their voice has gone out into all the earth. Their words to the end of the world. Again, I ask, did Israel not understand? Morning, Andy. Did, maybe that's what it is. Maybe they heard that Jesus was the Messiah, but they didn't quite understand that what they were being told is that Jesus from Nazareth is the Messiah you've been waiting for. So, so is that what it is, God? Did they just not understand? First, Moses says, I will make you envious by those who are not a nation. In other words, the Gentiles who get saved because they believed in Christ, the Israelites, the nation of Israel, will be jealous of them, envious of them, because they're being saved when the Israelites are not, because they believed in Christ. Then he says, I will make you angry by a nation that has no understanding. And Isaiah boldly says, I was found by those who did not seek me. I revealed myself to those who did not ask for me. But concerning Israel, he says, now he's talking about Jews, Gentiles, anyone who believes in him. But now he says, according to, uh, I'm sorry, but concerning Israel, he says, all day long I have held out my hands to a disobedient and obstinate people. Disobedient and obstinate. If you don't know what obstinate is, look it up. God wants you to willingly accept the fact that Jesus Christ is God and that Jesus Christ as God came down to earth as a human, born in the humble circumstances of, of an animal stable lying in a manger where they feed animals, lived a normal life as a carpenter in a small town, the most unheard of, <coughs> unimpressive town you could imagine. And then for just barely three years, he travels the, <coughs> the known portions of Israel and preaches the word of God, <coughs> wins some disciples, then the Jewish leaders who've been waiting all this time for their Messiah don't like him because he's ruffling their feathers. Hey, we have a nice thing going here. We have our government and our religion here in the nation of Israel all established. We decide who's in charge. We decide what the people will believe. This guy, Jesus, he's a troublemaker. He's not going along with what we said was going to happen. We, he's not doing all the things that we said people should do. So we can't believe he's the Messiah. Well, guess what? It doesn't matter what you think. Jesus is the Messiah. And you cannot be saved any other way. Morning, Mark. Morning, Sandra. You cannot be saved any other way. Jesus Christ is the Messiah. There is one way to heaven. There is one name under heaven given by which man must be saved. The name of Jesus Christ. Remember what we studied. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is is Lord. I pray to God that if you're listening to this, you've already done it. <coughs> you've already done it. And if you ha if you haven't, do it now. Do it now. Let's let's close with a word of prayer and let's open an invitation right now for anyone watching this now or later. If you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior, then do it now. Follow me. Heavenly Father, I just come before you as a sinner. I confess my fallen nature and I beg your forgiveness for all the sins I've committed. Father, I ask you to forgive my sins and for Jesus to come and dwell in my heart through the Holy Spirit. I ask you to save me from the consequences of my own sin. And I ask you to let me be seen as righteous in your eyes because of the blood of Jesus. Father, thank you 
for forgiving me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for welcoming me as a, welcoming me as a son into the family of believers. Lord God, I just thank you for everyone listening to this message today. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. That's Romans chapter 10. Morning, Mike. Morning, Angela. Lynn, everybody getting on here now. That's Romans chapter 10. Next week, we'll be right back here with Romans chapter 11. Don't miss it. But thank God for the word of God. Pass the message. Keep the faith, but not to yourself. In Jesus' name, I pray. God loves you. So do I. I'll see you next week. Right back here. Bye for now.